Hey guys, how's it going? So today, my mom and I are gonna be canning a bunch of tomatoes. So last night I got outside and I picked most of the tomatoes that we had out there, mostly Romas. I did pick a few slicers as well. We're gonna be mostly focusing on Romas today. It's been quite a long time since I've canned anything because the last time I did it, I canned everything I could get my hands on and I think I burned myself out. You got the canner? Perfect. It's a good clean. Well, that, that works, so did mine. It's been a while. <laughs> I was just explaining <laughs> that the last time that I canned, do you remember that? I canned everything I could yeah. yes. and I burned myself out. So this time I thought, you know, I'm gonna freeze some things. I'm gonna can a few things, but only the things I find myself buying at the store the most. So today we're gonna be doing just petite diced tomatoes. Aren't those pretty? Those are beautiful. Did you know the color. they are? Do you know I put those in my containers last fall? And they wintered over, they were in there with some pansies and kale. And shallow little Uh-huh, and they're in the shade most of the day. Well. Kind of goes to show what plants will do if you just try it, you know, and get lucky, I guess. <laughs> also, when I was picking tomatoes last night, I ran across three black widow spiders. And then I kind of just, yeah, there's more out there. I just need to feel a little bit braver before I go out and pick more. So here are the tomatoes. We've got a whole bunch of them sitting here. I think we want to focus mainly on the romas, don't you think? I think so. Um, so that includes yeah. this crate and this basket right here. The rest of them are just heirloom slicer tomatoes. There's some like cocktail tomatoes over here. You could take a bunch of these home with you. Oh, too. yum. Yeah. I only have one tomato plant. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a little bit more than that. So it's perfect. Look That's a this. pineapple. Oh, Isn't that it's pretty? huge. And they are tasty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People people oftentimes don't want to grow them because they don't look like like this. They don't look picture. You know, well, well that's, <laughs> not that, that don't, that's not a good example. Here, okay. this one. There you go. That one. They look like this in the yeah. store, but this is packed full of flavor. Yeah, so much yeah. better most of the time. Yeah, really good. So I think what we're going to do is the hot pack method of canning tomatoes and using their own juices instead of water uh, to fill up the rest of the jar. I've been doing a bunch of reading because it's been so many years since I've canned, and I think that'll be the, the best way to do it. So what we're gonna do is peel, peel all the tomatoes. So I've got a pot of water boiling on the stove already, so we'll do a like 30 to 90 second plunge in boiling water until the skin starts to crack. Then you take them out and you pop them in cold water, which I'll fill one side of the sink up with cold water. And then you can slip the skin right off the tomato. Look at you. Can you turn around for me? Oh, so sweet. You have wings. I love it. You butterfly. Anyway, we'll slip the skins off and then we will seed them. Uh, because if you leave the seeds in, it can, can kind of give a bitter taste to the tomatoes. So we'll remove the seeds and then we will cut the tomatoes up into like half to one inch size chunks. And then we will put them back in a pot of boiling water for just five minutes so that they can um, heat up a little bit. And the, the benefit of doing a hot pack versus a uh, raw pack for tomatoes is that um, if you do a raw pack and then you know fill it up with boiling water, oftentimes the tomatoes shrink up and you end up with so much less in that jar. Like the quality is just a little bit better doing it this way. Um, so we'll heat them up for five minutes, pack the jars full, and then we'll process them in a water bath for about 35 minutes for our pints, 45 minutes for our quarts. I think that's pretty much it. We will be adding citric acid. You could do citric acid or lemons, lemon juice if you want. Um, I've got both, so we might try both. And then we will probably add a little bit of salt in ours as well. You don't have to do that. But anyway, we just thought it would be fun to bring you guys along for this process. I actually called my mom. She was on her way here, and I just said, I think we could use two canners because each time we do this, each round of jars is going to take 35 to 45 minutes to process. That will be our bottleneck, I think, today. Also, I hope this little one burner works because one of my stovetop burners is not working. It's not reliable. Actually, one of them is not working altogether, and one of them is not reliable. So I only have two reliable burners on my stovetop right now. That's enough. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> a couple other things that are handy to have, a wide mouth funnel like this. So you can put it in your jar and then put the tomatoes in, and you don't make a big old mess all over your jar. Uh, slotted spoon, of course. You know, I've got my water here. We'll be putting the tomatoes in, and we can easily get them out. And then a uh, jar lifter, like so. So you can raise and lower your jars out of the canners. I just sanitized a bunch of these. They're all ready to go. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is load this up to lower some in. Okay, so let's see. We're gonna do a, the 30 to 90 second plunge here, Mom. Okay. 
I thought it might be easier just to lower them down in. Yeah, it's just splashing ourselves. Splashing, yeah. Oh yeah, way nicer than plunking them down in. Yeah. There. Well, I filled that quite full. I could probably get rid of some of that water. That's okay, <laughs> that's okay. It'll it'll use up. Okay, we'll do just these few real quick so you can see close up how this goes. It's not like quite boiling either. It was. Oop. <laughs> Does that mean it's not fresh? <laughs> it's like Oops. an egg if yeah. it floats or not. Okay, it's been 30 seconds. They're not quite there yet. Oh, I gotta get a bu bowl of cold water. That's how I have to peel tomatoes. The skin looks a little puckery on this one. Should we try it? One with the other ones, and then that skin should slip right off. Okay. Yeah, look at that. Slips right off. How oh. easy is that? And then no knife required, just yeah. about, except for cutting. So then we're gonna do, whoops, we're gonna do, sorry. Try not to put my hand in front of, you, in front of the view there. We're gonna do that, and then we're going to remove all the seeds, which we'll probably be doing this over the sink, and then any of the core or any bruised spots, we'll be getting rid of those too. We'll find our rhythm too, I won't look as fumbly. <laughs> this for for the whole time and then we'll just cut them up oops into half to one inch size pieces like so oh oh that's the bottom of the tomato right there there we go oh that's perfect yeah Report here, almost done with the basket. Samantha singing happy, happy birthday. birthday to you. Oh my, nice. <laughs> Starting in on the crate as well. And this is where we're at. So pretty much seated. I mean, you can see a few here and there, but all chopped up and ready to roll. We've got these in the cold water bath and mom's working on that bowl right there. <laughs> But I think we're gonna start packing jars, right? So yeah. we can get them going. Yep. So we'll basically be taking our sterilized jars, using the large funnel, and then just spooning this mixture in and packing it in as tight as we can while leaving a half inch of head space. So about right to here.
Well, we are almost done, you guys. We've got 20 jars of diced tomatoes sitting right here on the counter, and there are 14 more jars processing right now. And 19 of these have popped, they've sealed. The last one is this one right here. I'm just waiting to hear that pop sound. Hopefully it does, and if it doesn't, then we'll use it probably in the next couple days. Look at how beautiful these are. And we just did the Romas. We did not attempt the other two baskets full of slicer type. Although my mom did eat one of these or two, I think <laughs> in the middle of the day. And Benjamin cut all of these up and salted them and has them ready for us for dinner, which is very sweet of him. Good job, dude. Such a beautiful thing. These are pretty cool already. Now we did kind of skip the heat pack step. We didn't reheat them after we did the whole plunge in the boiling water to slip the skins because we let them process like that quite a lot longer and we didn't want the tomatoes to be mush. Um, so we just left them in the boiling water a little bit longer, took them out, let them cool off just a little bit and then slipped the skins, cleaned them and packed them full in here. And I think they're gonna be great. And I didn't notice much shrinkage of the tomatoes. I think just heating them a little bit longer that first time was perfect. I did notice like on one, maybe this one right here, like tail end of the bowl. This, the spoonfuls I was putting in here were just a lot more liquidy uh, because they were toward the bottom of the bowl where all the liquid had caught. So we've got a little bit more liquid in just a couple of the jars, but most of them are top to bottom filled with the actual tomatoes. So now my mom wandered off somewhere outside a little while ago while I was kind of cleaning up. So I'm gonna make us a piece of banana bread and go find her. I think she was gonna go out to the studio. I made some banana bread with the milled wheat and it turned out beautifully and we've almost eaten the whole thing. Yep, I'm getting down to the end there. It looks good though, doesn't it? It turned out so great. Don't those look good? Mm. I feel like we worked for this snack today too. Oh, hello. Are you doing some work out here? I am. You, you want a new job? <laughs> Talk to your dad about that. I'm sure he'd be thrilled. There you oh, go. Oh, I'm hungry. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. So you've been watering and grooming, it looks like. I have. I found a little. Oh, mealy bug action. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to handle that. Yeah, cause this is a, this is a really neat little goldfish gold plant, yeah. but it is very infested. Yeah, and I have to dip that whole thing. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, so this is pulled aside. Oh, okay, so yum. that's with our wheat. My gosh. It smells so good. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> I'm gonna move away from the mealybug plant. <laughs> oh, that's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. She's been telling me for a long time that she wants to come up and take care of my house plants. I wonder why. <laughs> The poor things are so neglected. Well, I know you don't like it. Uh-uh. And I do. Yeah. So between the two of us, we'll get it done. And do you know what? Mm. We're gonna each end up with 17 jars of tomatoes. Mm. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. 17 that is. jars mm -hmm. each. Mm -hmm. We're gonna eat our snack for a minute and then I'll show you all the jars on the counter when we get back in and they come out of the processor. I think I've only got about 10 minutes left on the first, mm -hmm. yeah, on the first one. Mom, can I interest you in this plant? What in the world? It's a type of senecio. Well, it's just like, it's like a snake. I know. Yeah, no. You freak somebody out with that. <laughs> <laughs> I like more of the fluffy, ferny kind of stuff. Yeah. Yes, that's my cup of tea. Oh, things are looking so much better in here now. Oh, my goodness. I know how you don't like, like you don't like some of that stuff to get too long and mm -hmm. drapey. Yeah. So I actually pulled every single thing apart. Oh, you did. And I, and I, I, to, um, I like Her gave it a bob. Oh, nice. And so there were some long things with just one thing mm -hmm. with no leaves at all. Oh my. And then like some leaves at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And I know you don't like that. No. So I, I gave it a little haircut and then I, I got it kind of separated around so it'll be sort of all the way around. Oh, I like it. It looks really nice. <sighs> it's very satisfying. All right guys, so I have to head back in. I gotta pull some more jars out. <laughs> but I thought I would just run by each one of these shelves here so you could see what we have going on, which everything, I'm not embarrassed to show it anymore. <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> hmm. First shelf, this one hasn't changed much probably since the last time I showed you. Bunch of fun agave, uh, aloes, just 
assorted succulents. This shelf is less full. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. Oh. And this right here, like, do these grow or is this it? Well, I've heard differing opinions on that, so uh -huh. I'm really not sure. Because I've heard, yes, it does, because they have to be started somehow. Yeah. But I don't know how. Because I've had this for, for a while, yeah. a good while. And it looks healthy. It does, it's happy. Looks good. Yeah. So cute. And I love the Ripsalis that looks like this. I think these are so cool. Quick look at this one. A little bit more color on this shelf. I love this fern down here. This is surprisingly tough, given it the treatment it gets. Yeah, that one just got a good groom. Looks nice. Yeah, We've looks... got another tray of African violets I started not that long ago, probably like two weeks ago. Succulents down here. Oh, there's my timer. Oh. <laughs> Run. Okay, real quick, real quick. Okay. These are some of the ones that Mountain Crest Gardens sent out last. Some of the stragglers I haven't used yet in projects. And then we've got more ferns. These are African violets I started last winter. And this shelf here, real fun stuff. And then we've got this one with some random plants, most of which came from inside that weren't looking good. So they came out here to be uh, hospitalized kind of. And then this shelf right over here. Got a few fun things, the Rick Rack cactus. Rick Rack, is that right? Rick Rack, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or zigzag, zigzag cactus. I don't know, whatever. Gotta get those jars out. And there they are, all 34 jars. Now this one never did seal, so I'm gonna use it in tonight's dinner actually. It's gonna work out perfectly. Oh, it's just a thing of beauty. Now you can add salt to the jars if you want to. I don't know if I already mentioned this. And we decided not to add any to ours so that you can just salt it afterward depending on what you're making. It's kind of nice to have that flexibility. So the only thing in these jars is that quarter teaspoon of citric acid and then tomatoes themselves canned in their own juices. No water, nothing. So it should be a really nice intense tomato flavor. Those are so pretty. Did you make that? Yeah. yeah? Make you and Lissa did. It's so pretty. And did. Yeah. So I'm making a tortellini kind of beef skillet meal uh, that calls for, I've not made it before, but it seemed really easy. So I picked it out because I thought cheese tortellini the kids would love, uh, ground beef, which we had in the freezer downstairs. And it calls for a cup of water. After you get done browning the beef, you put the cup of water in and some beef bouillon, and then you put tor the tortellini in and, and some seasonings. And I thought instead of the water, maybe we'll do the canned tomatoes and see how it goes. I think it'll actually be more flavorful that way. Yeah, so let's make it up real quick. And you guys, that is dinner. So fresh tomatoes from the other basket, salted with fresh mozzarella and basil on top. And then the easiest skillet dinner ever. I uh, forgot to turn on the camera to show you that I put some minced garlic in there and then browned my beef. And then I added in the can of tomatoes, a little bit of extra water, and then seasoning, you know, salt and pepper and all that business. You could put crushed red pepper flakes in here. I think that would be really good. I'll probably put that on mine. I didn't want to have that in there for the kids. And then uh, you put the frozen tortellini, just a bag of that in there. And then I topped it with fresh mozzarella, Parmesan and basil, which it didn't call for. It called for Italian cheese blend, but I didn't have that. So anyway, looks delicious. So anyway, guys, that is it for today's video. See there's red sauce in there. Yeah. I showed him a picture of what I was going to make and he's like, there's no red sauce. Where's the, <laughs> where's the red sauce? Well, you so, just canned a bunch of tomatoes. Seems like there should be some red sauce. And there is. There is. So there you go. There's your red sauce. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this video today. I just thought you might like to come along for what we ended up doing. It's just been so, so long since I've canned. I mean, I canned some strawberries. I did strawberry jam, strawberry syrup this spring, but before that it had been years since I had done that. I think I maybe made a little bit of applesauce a couple of years ago and canned that. Oh, yeah, I just need to learn from my mistakes from years past and don't can 
all the things. And that was a year we didn't have kids even at that point. Yeah. And I canned way more than we needed. And anyway, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're going to have dinner now. Hope you guys are having a great day and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.